Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to look at classifying vertebrates. So we're going to start off by looking at what we mean by a vertebrate, and then we're going to go through the different classes of vertebrates, so the different groups that we would normally kind of assign um, a vertebrate into. So what do we mean by a vertebrate? Well, a vertebrate is the scientific word for an organism that has an internal skeleton or backbone. Okay, it's, where, it's from the same word that we get our vertebrae from, the bones that make up our spine. Um, so all of these living things that you can see in these images are examples of vertebrates. Now this internal skeleton may be made up of bone, like us, or it may be made up of cartilage or some combination of the two. So in our bodies we have both bone and cartilage, but predominantly bone, whereas other organisms like sharks, for example, have a, um, a, a skeleton made of cartilage. Okay, the, the Latin name or the kind of the, the scientific term for it is a chordate, um, coming from the same sort of thing we get spinal cord or this, this idea of this, this string that goes through us. Okay, so there's five main classes of vertebrates that we're going to focus on. Mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. So firstly, let's look at mammals. So some of the properties of mammals, they are warm-blooded. They regulate their temperature in, inside their body. Most mammals give birth to live babies, live young. Um, there are some examples that lay eggs. We're going to go through that in a moment. Um, they're called monotremes. But most of the time, they're giving birth to a living, breathing, um, you know, juvenile. So baby, joey, whatever it is. That that young, that baby that's given birth to, feed on milk through what's called the mammary glands. So through a teat or a nipple that then actually get nourishment from the mother. Their skin is covered in hair or fur of some kind and they exhibit what we call maternal care. That is, mothers look after their young. Um, they feed them, but also actually keep them safe and make sure that they are, um, you know, they, they kind of stay with the group or stay with the parent. Okay, so there's three main um, groups of mammals that we're looking at. Um, so we talk about what's called placental mammals. Um, so they give birth to developed live babies. Um, there's, um, there is a placenta inside the uterus of, of where that baby develops, so like in, for us as human beings, that that young feed on milk from the mother. Um, so humans, primates like baboons or gorillas, tigers, whales, dolphins are all placental mammals. Okay, but so the baby, the young is relatively developed. Um, it depends on the species, for example. You know, a human baby is less developed than a baby tiger, for example, but relatively speaking, they are well, um, well grown. Um, we also, particularly relevant in Australian context, have a lot of mammals called marsupials. So the young are born live, but they're quite immature. They haven't, they've still got a lot of growing and developing to do before they can survive on their own. So they're born um, very immature, then they develop further in a, an external pouch or marsupium attached to a teat or nipple. So where they're getting fed, they're kind of kept in that pouch until they're old enough and grown enough to be able to survive on their own. So for example, kangaroo or koala, possum, um, quokka, bilby, they're all marsupial mammals. And the third category is that are those odd, one out, odd ones out, particularly in Australian context. They're mammals that lay eggs as opposed to give birth to live young. So the young feed on this milk-like substance that gets secreted from the abdomen of the, of the, the mother. Um, so, for example, a platypus or a kidney are two kind of examples. Monotremes are very uncommon, um, but they do exist. But the idea is that they fit the characteristics of other mammals in other areas and just with the eggs that they lay instead. Okay, so after mammals, we're going to focus on birds. All right, so birds, they've got a skin covered by feathers. They lay eggs. They are warm-blooded, that is, they can in regulate their temperature in their own body. Um, most birds can fly, obviously not all can. Um, some are land-based, some are water-based, some can swim like a penguin, can't fly, but it can definitely swim and use um, those abilities there. They also exhibit maternal care. So they look out once they lay their eggs and they hatch, they look after the young, they feed them until they're old enough to survive on their own. After birds, we have reptiles. Reptiles have skin covered in dry scales instead of feathers or fur or hair. Um, they are cold-blooded which means they can't regulate their temperature inside their body. They rely on their environment. That's why reptiles spend a lot of time sunning themselves to warm their bodies up. Um, but it means that they can also survive. Um, they don't need to eat food as regularly because um, they can serve their energy better. They lay eggs. They may be leathery eggs um, or hard shell kind of eggs, but they have this waterproof kind of coating that, that helps them to survive where then they get laid. 
but there's also usually no maternal care for reptiles compared with mammals and birds. Okay, so once the eggs are laid, you know, they're kind of kept safe and that's kind of it. Um, so turtles, crocodiles, snakes are all example of reptiles. Okay, so they may be land-based, they may be water-based or some mixture of the two, um, depending on the, their particular kind of class. After reptiles, we're going to look at amphibians, which are quite similar in some ways, but they're not the same. Try not to confuse the two. So amphibians have naked, moist skin rather than dry scales, hair, fur, feathers. Okay, they tend to lay eggs. Okay, now one of the things about amphibians is that they often have this connection between water and land. And they, through their life cycle, they undergo what's called metamorphosis. They get, you know, so for example, think of a frog. It gets laid as eggs in water, develops into a tadpole, which lives in water. It, go, it changes through its life cycle to become a land-based frog, which then lays eggs and the cycle kind of completes from there. Um, other amphibians do the same thing, like the axolotl. Um, where we, it lives in water and then it can change to become a salamander if the right hormones are, are introduced. Okay, so that this, you know, it's from the same way that we get this word amphibious, meaning it can be water and land at the same, like, for the same thing. Um, but there's also typically no maternal care. Um, frog, cane toad, salamander are all examples. Um, and then lastly, after amphibians, we talk about fish. So fish, they breathe using gills. They have paired fins um, in some respect. Their skin is covered in scales as opposed to all of the other kind of coverings for the other vertebrates. They are cold-blooded, their temperature is regulated by their environment, but because they live in water, um, that then the idea is that the temperature of the water is what dictates their body temperature. It's very energy efficient, but it also means that the temperature of the water is crucial to a fish's survival. You know, if you've ever had fish in a fish tank, now, you know, in cleaning up the water, you know you, you've got to use water at the right temperature, otherwise they will die. Um, they lay eggs, they're externally fertilised, so the, the eggs are kind of, you know, typically kind of fertilised in the water um, and then looked after from there. So clownfish or shark are examples of fish. Okay, so we looked at what is a vertebrate, something that has an internal skeleton or backbone, maybe made of bone or cartilage or some combination. And the classes of vertebrates, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians and fish. We've looked at some examples of each, some of their key features that we can use to tell them apart. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.